Hey, this is Steve Renaria and I'm an attorney and special needs dad. I felt compelled to make this video after seeing special needs moms and dads get criticized by people they trust because they're considering getting guardianship for their child and not pursuing other alternatives. After doing a lot of research and speaking with parents, it became clear to me that there were very few resources that speak frankly about the risks for a child with a developmental disability if you forego guardianship and use one or more of the alternatives. One thing I want to make clear, I think that the work done by the disability rights movement to get people to rethink the automatic use of guardianship for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities is a good thing. Guardianship is a serious judicial tool that brings your family under the jurisdiction of the courts and removes some of the civil liberties of your child. It's a decision that shouldn't be made lightly and alternatives should be considered. For some families, foregoing guardianship is totally appropriate, but for others, it would be completely irresponsible. Ultimately, you need to decide what's the best solution for your family, and you should be armed with the most complete information to make that decision. That's why I made this video, and I wrote the article that it accompanies. When a child turns 18, all of the decision-making authority about that child's life transfers from the parent to the child. This includes things like where to live, who to marry, consent for medical procedures, and how to manage your money. Parents of a child with a developmental disability consider getting guardianship when their child turns 18 if that child doesn't have the capacity to safely make those big life decisions on their own. An application is filed with a court who removes some or all of those rights from the child and grants them to the guardian, which is typically a parent. Now, in practice, most parents report that after getting guardianship, not much changes with respect to their job as parent and their relationship with their child. Where possible, parents have their child participate in all the decisions as they had done before, and life goes on as usual. Guardianship gives parents who are concerned for the safety of their child the greatest assurance that their child will be protected from making decisions that the child may not have the capacity to make on their own. It provides the greatest assurance that their child will be protected from people who wish to scam, hurt, or take advantage of their child. On the other hand, the disability rights movement contends that life itself is about making decisions and that there, there's dignity in dealing with the risk that comes with making them. The movement has coined a term for this, dignity of risk, and believes that people with developmental disabilities should not have their rights taken away through guardianship and instead should be afforded the rights to make decisions and have the dignity to suffer the consequences of those decisions just like their typical peers. So what are the alternatives to guardianship? In Florida, there are eight alternatives that are frequently mentioned. But the ones you may have heard of are using a durable power of attorney, statutory medical proxies, and using a joint bank account. I discuss all eight of those alternatives and the risks of using them in my article, which I encourage you to read. But here's what I want you to know. Think of guardianship like these sugar packets. Say you want to start living a healthier lifestyle and want to avoid the negative effects of refined sugar. So what are your choices? Well, you could use honey. Honey's a natural sugar. It's got a lot of antioxidants. It will sweeten your tea. It's a good substitute for sugar. Another choice is just to stop using sugar altogether and drink your tea black. Cutting sugar out from your diet is one alternative to using sugar. But like the honey, it's not a substitute for sugar. It will not make your tea sweet. In the case of children with de developmental disabilities, alternatives to guardianship are like abstaining from sugar. It's an alternative to guardianship, but it's not a substitute. Your child will not be as protected as with a guardianship but they will not have their rights removed. With all alternatives to guardianship, ultimately any life decision will be made by your child. Some of the alternatives give you the right to assist with those decisions, but you will not have the final say. Another thing to consider is that most of the alternatives are revocable by your child, which means that your child can forbid you to assist them with major life decisions for any reason or for no reason. It also means that your child has the ability to substitute your assistance for that of someone else. And that other person may or may not have your child's best interest in mind. So for parents who have kids who are highly suggestible, are overly trusting, are nonverbal, and don't have the ability to reliably communicate through an augmentative communication device, or who have a social and mental ability that's considerably below the age of majority, even though guardianship would legally take away some of your child's rights, careful consideration needs to be made as to whether pursuing an alternative in lieu of guardianship is the responsible risk to take. 
Like I said earlier, guardianship is a serious judicial tool that involves removing someone's civil rights. Careful consideration should be made whether this is a necessary measure for your child. And you should make that decision with full knowledge of the risks you and your child will face if you forego guardianship. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's a really difficult decision. But maybe these two real life examples will help you. So my daughter has a rare genetic syndrome called Cui de Chat. In our community, there's a man named James who has an intellectual and developmental disability as a result of the syndrome. James lives independently, he has a full-time job, he runs marathons, he drives, he goes on trips by himself. James is a Special Olympics coach and he speaks at conferences. James' parents didn't need to pursue guardianship for him. It wasn't necessary. But let's compare James to Michael, who has the same syndrome. Michael lives at home with his parents and is relying on their care to meet his basic needs. He doesn't work, he has limited communication skills, and his social and emotional skills are well below that of a typical 18-year-old. Now, Michael's mom tried to forego the guardianship route until one day Michael needed surgery for a life-threatening condition. On that day, Michael couldn't hold a pen to sign a consent form for pre-op blood work, and the surgeon refused to treat him. Now, luckily, Michael's primary care physician intervened and he was able to convince the surgeon to perform the surgery. And Michael's mom ended up filing for guardianship the next week. So here you've got two men who both have an intellectual and developmental disability as a result of the same syndrome, but one clearly needed guardianship and the other did not. So here's my advice for you. If your child's turning 18, I encourage you to check out the full article that accompanies this video. Really educate yourself about the benefits and risk of guardianship and consider each of the alternatives. Know that despite all the noise from the guardianship shamers, you will have made an informed decision that's a good fit for your unique family situation.